now is a time to shed some light on what is happening in uh, Dubai. And I'm uh, really honored and pleased to have uh, with me today Faisal, has, uh, Faisal Alawi, that is the head of accelerators and incubators of the Dubai Future Foundation. Hi, Faisal. Hi, Alberto. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great honor and pleasure. And again, uh, I think it was uh, a must uh, have today since being digitally, as digitally, you physically in Dubai to get some understanding what is happening in Dubai. Again, uh, we've been discussing uh, last week, again, all the big plans and the phenomenal initiative that are beyond uh, Expo 2020. And uh, again, one of the key players that is emerging for all the conversation we're having in the region is Dubai Future Foundation. And uh, so I would like to get from you, first of all, an introduction of yourself and Dubai Future Foundation. And then during our conversation, I'd like to, to shed some lights in terms of uh, what you're up to, what is happening in Dubai, what is happening inside the Emirates Tower that is uh, the, the cornerstone of innovation for Dubai, for the region, not just for Dubai. Yeah, great, with pleasure. Um, so just as a start with the introduction, my name is Faisal Howie. I'm the head of Accelerators, Incubators and in ADA 2071 at the Dubai Future Foundation. Um, so just a, a glimpse history of the Dubai Future Foundation. We were basically a seed of uh, the great vision of His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed when we started a couple of years back at the World Government Summit with basically a design fiction experiment of understanding you know what the future could look like in different sectors but more specifically what does the human look like uh, what does the future look like for humans and their interactions and from that experiment which we believe was very successful his highness kind of like put the message and the vision forward to institutionalize that process so it's not just a one-off you know exhibition or uh, an event but rather a much structured process, institutionalized, properly uh, laid down to understand exactly how we go about the future, how do we kind of like look for trends of the future and opportunities, and basically how to experiment with them to kind of like the, the, the vision or the strategy say, imagine, design, and execute the future. So at the Dubai Future Foundation, we have a lot of, um, a number of initiatives and platforms to basically support that vision of making Dubai the leading city of the future. And if, um, I'm more than happy to talk about these initiatives as our conversation unfolds. Yes, uh, first of all, I would like probably just to, to give a, a physical uh, perspective. And I think we have a picture of the Emirates Towers and area 2071, and probably you want to explain why 2071. If I'm not wrong, 1971 has been uh, the, the, the birth of the UAE, and if the fact that you're looking forward 50 years from now, I think is, is telling that there is a, a long-term strategy and vision, as you mentioned. Can you give us some, uh, some understanding of what is happening in the Emirates Tower and area 2071? Sure. Sure, and I think that picture will speak a lot of you know uh, comments, which I will highlight as well. So, like you rightfully said, 2071 is basically the year that the UAE completes its centennial, uh, 100 years from uh, you know inception, um, and that basically just tells us you know how far along our vision of our leadership goes. You know, we want to be the best nation in the world by that year, and. And in order to get that, we need to really understand, you know, how to look into the future, how to analyze it, how to really, you know, spin out initiatives and platforms and kind of like achieve things with impact as we move forward. Uh, now, the only thing that's missing in the picture that you showed is basically our museum of the future, which basically is right in the place of where the blue lagoon or uh, small pool is. And that's basically the iconic um, museum of the future which basically showcases you know, a lot of different things, the vision, the impact, the far-fetched um, you know, uh, purpose and desire to really design and, and imagine the future. And uh, the Emirates Towers as well is also at the heart of what we call the Dubai Future District. So if you see the picture and the, the kind of like the gate tower just to the right of the towers and also to the left of the towers, that's all what we call the Dubai Future District. And it's basically 
the district of the future, innovation, startups, and talent. Um, Area 2071 specifically is, is basically the hub and the cornerstone and the seed for the innovation and tech ecosystem in Dubai. Uh, we collaborate with our partners in the Dubai International Financial Center, where they're like the financial services hub, and the Dubai World Trade Center on the left of the towers to kind of like be the hub of tourism and future events and so on. So a lot of things are happening in that district. A lot of things are happening in the towers. We have different government entities who are always looking, you know, for different initiatives to to support and um, and kind of like create a solid backbone of where Dubai can lead into the future. No, I think uh, two things really struck my attention when I was uh, hearing from what you guys are doing. First of all, is that you were really able to materialize the concepts of under the same roof because under the same roof, there is the entire uh, ecosystem of innovation of Dubai, at least the, the, and then there are also all the government and the, the fact that the government is co-located uh, with Area 2071, it's concretely opened the doors to, to start up and innovators to the government. And the second part that I'd like I probably to also to give us a better understanding because I think it was, was phenomenal. The fact that in, in the Dubai government, there is a minister of possibilities is I think is another sign that uh, that is how you are really looking forward and you are really looking, you are open to to listen, you are open to to innovate from and to listen to any potential opportunity that might come from the ecosystem. So can you elaborate a bit more? Because I think this is, from outside, is difficult to be perceived. We love to be there to, to physically touch and feel, but since yeah. we cannot, I think you can convey this through your words. Definitely. Uh, I think you touched on a very important aspect that we really highly kind of like weigh, which is under the same roof. And that basically is about collaboration. Um, at the heart of Area 2071, you know, the, the concepts of co-design co and co-creation, which is collaborative design and collaborative co-creation, -cre uh, is really the essence of everything that we do. Uh, Area 2071 is not only for government entities. So if you actually come to Area 2071 through the boulevard or the towers, there are a number of different entities coming from the private sector. You have youth centers who attract talent. You have uh, private sector entities, the likes of you know uh, Emirates Airlines or Pfizer or the likes as well, ENY and the others, other partners of the ecosystem. But you also have you know the leading government entities in different sectors as well in the towers. So the idea was, bring everybody together. The collaborative power of you know, minds of creating the future, imagining the future, experimenting with the future. This is really what Area 2071 is, basically the, the vision of Area 2071. And this is where we want to um, kind of like even elaborate more and bring more partners to work together. So we don't only look at government, we look at different sectors. So academia, government, private sector, business and industry, investors, talent, so all of them come under the same roof in a co-located environment as well to kind of like exchange these ideas and thoughts and collaborate to working on these projects and proof of concepts and pilots and so on just to make sure that everybody understands what the future entails but at the same time push the boundaries and explore different opportunities which brings me to the point that you mentioned about the ministry of possibilities which is also co-located in area 2071 so they are also at the same vicinity and the objective there is basically to challenge kind of like, you know, the, the myths of government, you know, um, like for example, I'll shed light on one of the projects. So procurement itself, when it comes to government, the process of procurement could be a bit, you know, long, tedious, kind of like um, inefficient at some cases. So the challenge there was, why can't we do procurement not in one day, in six minutes? So that's kind of like the vision that one of the projects which goes under the Ministry of uh, Possibilities kind of like embark on. And that basically signifies the kind of, you know, um, ambitious uh, targets that we, we set um, uh, in Area 2071, inspired by our visions of leadership. Now, again, six minutes is, again, I was ready to... 60 days again, but uh, six minutes probably is a way too much. But I think it's the same approach that uh, we will hear from, um, for example, Aviation X, the concept that looking for moonshots, 
rather mm -hmm. than looking for incremental small uh, improvements i think probably is one of the characteristics of multiple initiatives that are currently happening in the dubai ecosystem again the ability to look really forward with a vision and looking to making substantial progress as mentioned moonshots again if you are yeah. striking for the moon uh, the worst case that might happen is to catch a star uh, while if you look uh, close by home probably there is yes you can do probably achieve something but this something will not really make a dent in the in their history and in the in everybody's life and so that's i think is is the common denominator that i'm seeing happening over there and maybe you can share some of the initiatives as, as dubai future foundation you are running they are pretty yeah. ample and widespread yeah so i think just a comment on the point that you raised you're absolutely right i mean if we set you know kind of like moonshots to go after it, it's a lot of the times it's not really about the project implementation. It's also about inspiring people behind these projects, you know, uh, capacity building these people, having that sort of connection to these projects that people can be ambitious, people can think outside the box and can really think big and kind of like strive towards that. And, and we place a great, great importance on, you know, the power of mind, the importance of, you know, human passion and putting these passions and dedication to these projects, because we believe that's, that plays a major role in, in achieving impact. Uh, now to your second question, is when it comes to you know, the initiatives that we run at the foundation, we actually have a couple of them. Each one is you know, positioned differently, positioned in a different, uh, for different target audiences, for different horizon of innovation and so on. So I'd like to touch base on a couple. One of them uh, is the flagship Dubai Future Accelerators. So that's basically our attempt of basically bridging the gap between government and private sector and startups. Um, today, I mean, when, when we first created it, you know, the concept of working with startups might not have been the norm in government. Um, working closely with startups of their speed, with their intention. Um, a lot of the times, even, even globally, it's, a, it's a, the, the way conglomerates or governments or large corporations see startup as a threat. But we thought like this is an opportunity, you know, it's not just about being disrupted, but it's also being collaborative and working together in solving these problems. So that's why the Dubai Future Accelerator aims to kind of like bridge the gap. We work with government partners to understand their challenges and then we source and, and look for startups that are best suited to work closely with them. We sponsor their visit to Dubai for a period of nine to 12 weeks completely equity free to work closely with the government to achieve you know a certain objective whether it's a pilot whether it's a proof of concept or whether it's a project as well so that kind of like creates a win-win situation for government they have direct access to innovation for startups they get an immense financial kind of like you know pipeline of commercial projects working with government so the anchor becomes even heavy and for us at the dubai future foundation it kind of like flourishes the ecosystem because you attract a lot of talent, you attract a lot of startups, but at the same time create these kind of dynamics between them. Um, another platform that we also oversee is the regulations lab. Um, and the, the challenge there was because we understand how technology requires a very flexible structure or framework of regulations. And it takes a lot of time to kind of like actually get to a point where you're changing regulation. We kind of wanted to create a sandbox environment or an experimentation uh, process for these technologies to go through in actual setups, in actual production setups, to kind of understand what are the changes required in regulations so that they can be implemented. So rather than it just being purely focused on, let's bring the regulation, analyze it, and understand, you know, kind of like whiteboard strategizing. No, let's actually bring the technology, have it working on ground, see how it's going, get that feedback and insight and then recommend you know the kind of directions forward for the regulations we also combine that with not only the focus of regulations but also creating markets around these technologies so for example when you're creating autonomous uh, drones for last mile delivery for example and so on who are basically all the players in the supply chain who are the manufacturers of drones who are the consumers who are the clients who are the end users of drones so bringing all of that together, understanding how the dynamics works in a real environment helps us set up, you know, that regulation properly. And the third one, which is what you mentioned about moonshots, which is 
what we have the, 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 the platform which is called Dubai 10X. And that basically aims to kind of disrupt all the existing business and operating models of government itself. Understanding how can we completely reimagine how we operate and how we work. So that platform is set up specifically for disruptive innovation or transformational uh, projects. It takes around two to three years for implementation and exploration and so on. So these are like some of the platforms that we run. We also have platforms around research, platforms around capacity building, platforms around content creation. And, and that way we believe that we create kind of like a holistic 360 approach of looking at the future. No, no, that's that's amazing because uh, you know uh, sometime uh, what really we at least in Silicon Valley the, the real differentiator uh, has been the mentality mm -hmm. and the mentality to to really want to do something that has an impact that is long term and that is big because again. Uh, uh, the cost of dreaming big dreams or small dreams is almost the same, the fixed cost. This is one yeah. of the way that he and Sergey were used to say at the early days of Google. And at the end uh, is the fact that there is such a mentality and this mentality is uh, embedded uh, in, uh, in a structure that make it possible experimentation. And there is also the willingness to, to experiment the willingness to experiment and to try. And again, the fact that you are uh, identifying challenging goals, or something that may really make the difference, I think is the most important characteristic. To, to end our conversation, I'd like to, to, to get your take on uh, the startups and scale of ecosystem in Dubai. How do you see it? How do you see Dubai as a probably an, onboarding uh, hub for the entire region and not just the region how do you see that um, i mean this is one of the key areas that we look at uh, of course at the Dubai Future foundation the startup ecosystem and entrepreneurs and talent in general um, i think you know the recent reports with the with the with the pandemic going around and so on the one thing that we noticed is that while it took like a slow uh, an initial slowdown the investment still came back and kind of like you know uh, the steady flow is still uh, existed, if not even more. Um, by percentage-wise, Dubai still kept, you know, the number one uh, city in, in, in the region with investments per capita or investments per uh, startup, um, in, even during the pandemic. And we are constantly working towards initiatives and so on to basically attract talent, retain talent, and kind of like enable the startup to have the most none kind of like fr or frictionless environment and experience to come to Dubai, incorporate in Dubai, set up legally and kind of like have, you know, the business environment that allows them to flourish. And with that in mind, we have, a, you know, it's not just about the Dubai Future Foundation, but the entire Dubai uh, structure is based on that. So if there are like, you know, um, free zones that are focused more on the creative industry, free zones that are focused more on the financial se sector, free zones that are focused more on the logistics sectors and so on and so on and so forth. So the idea is to kind of like create these kind of environments that could attract different target audience to come to Dubai. And then, of course, we understand that there are there will always be challenges. And this is where we have to identify them. We have to work closely with these startups to understand, you know, how to even further improve the ecosystem, how to further eliminate bottlenecks and frictions and so on. And this is basically what we are constantly doing at the uh, Area 2071 and the Bike Future Foundation. So, uh, Faisal, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, the experience of the Bike Future Foundation. Looking forward for next year to be physically in Dubai to, to bring our corporate guests to, to, to see, to really visit it and uh, to meet in person. But by now, thank you for, for this and uh, looking forward to monitoring uh, your progress in the incoming months. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Alberto. Thank you.